Many of us with anxiety issues have great difficulties dealing with the physical sensations of stress. These sensations can consume us so much, affect every aspect of our life and leave us completely drained from all energy. For me, some of the worst and also longest lasting symptoms that I have dealt with during my five year long battle with anxiety were nerve pains. From the very, very first day of my time dealing with anxiety issues all the way to the end, shortly before fully recovering, I've dealt with all sorts of different pains and sensations related to my nerves. And if anybody tells you that anxiety symptoms are all in your head and imagined, I can tell you that they are very, very real. The intensity of the symptoms range between barely noticeable and or a minor annoyance all the way up to pretty intense pains. I would have this very weird sensation that actually started off my first panic attack. It felt like a throbbing in my fingertips, a bit like they were swollen, warm, slightly numb, and also often accompanied by these weird sharp shooting pains that fired up at random in my hand. All I can say is that it was some really scary stuff, especially if you don't know what you're dealing with. Because all of this started on the left side of my body, I believed it to be a sign of a heart attack or stroke, and that was all I could think and care about at first. Even after dozens and dozens of doctor visits and multiple negative tests, I would always feel this numb and warm feeling in my fingertips. It wasn't painful or anything, but very noticeable, and I simply wasn't able to take my mind off of that sensation. It was like the subtle feeling in my fingertip completely took over all of my attention. It got me really deep into that thinking loop. I'm not anxious, why do I still feel like this? Did I get the right tests done? And all these questions and way more just kept coming and coming. With that I could feel this wave of anxiety taking over, the subtle weird feeling in my fingertips turned into proper numbness. In that moment I would start to freak kept trying to feel something in my hands and with that escalating anxiety I often would get that one sudden burst of prickling and stinging sensation that started on the top of my head and quickly spread throughout my entire body. It would just last a few seconds but you can imagine how scary that felt. But the worst part was not the panic attacks or these intense pains but that after a long time dealing with anxiety issues I developed sensations like a burning feeling to touch that would just never turn off. If I took my right hand for example and felt over my left ring finger all the way up my arm to my shoulder, I could feel this subtle burning and stinging sensation. Kind of like the first few layers of skin being off. Not extremely painful, but noticeable of course. And with all these things going on, I couldn't stop looking for answers. I would spend hours every day looking through articles about MS, ALS, Lyme disease, brain tumors, dislocated discs, get x-rays done, MRIs, went to chiropractors, but really nothing worked or could give me some kind of relief. After months and months not having answers that I felt were a logical explanation for all of this, I felt drained and my entire body was one big gigantic ache. My calves were extremely tight. My shoulders were heavy and crushing. Plus I would get these random quick cut or sting like pains all over my body. Oh and twitches, never ending twitches in my face and arms. It was a nightmare. But here I want to tell you that after now having fully recovered, I not only have none of these sensations, but feel better than ever. We've got to understand that for most of us, this all starts with one small sensation that feels a bit weird, let's say a small patch of skin that feels kind of sensitive. Well, in order to feel safe, we keep checking in, making sure the sensation is gone and not getting worse. This makes us really focus in on the sensation, amplifying it in our mind, which lets the stress shoot through the roof. And because we are so geniusly well read and know everything about any kind of neurological disease from our hours of research on the internet, we start to expect look for and eventually always find other signs and hints that confirm our biggest fears. We are now convinced that we are dealing with the real thing and the stress just keeps pouring in but for some reason no doctor or test can figure out what it is. We are stuck but at the same time our worries just keep pushing us to find an answer. We completely disregard all the reassurance we have gotten because we believe to know for a fact that all the pains and weird sensations are way too real to be just anxiety related or that they are so persistent throughout the entire day, every day, that it just wouldn't make any sense. In this state, we have turned ourselves into a corner with nothing in sight to make all of this stop. Our worries escalate, our muscles tense up, blood flows away from certain areas and into others. All of this because we worry so much that it triggers our fight or flight response. The physical and cognitive changes that come along with this response fire up even more worry and more symptoms, that it sucks us even deeper into this endless cycle of having lingering but slightly bearable symptoms that then turn into full-blown panic attacks, which then amplifies everything again. For most of us in this cycle, we lose the ability to find some worry-free time to de-stress the mind and most importantly the body. And this all leads to a constant buildup of stress and highly fired up nerves. I noticed for example that my entire body was so extremely tense if I held my arm just slightly up it would fall asleep and tingle. Same thing when sitting. 
my legs would immediately start to fall asleep. My brain would classify it as something dangerous in an instant without me even needing to think about what was going on. And when it comes to getting over these pains and coming out of this highly sensitized state, it is important to acknowledge and accept that we will have symptoms, we will feel uneasy and uncomfortable, and there is no one thing that will make all of this go away from one day to the other. Understand that your body and mind are tense and fired up even if you feel you aren't. There simply wasn't enough time between your worries for your stress levels to go back to where they should be. So when you feel persistent symptoms that are there all day, it's still not a telltale sign that it can't be anxiety. Some of you know that my approach to recovery was for the most part based around the body. I don't want to get into too much detail here, so you can check out this playlist here. But I did so because controlling the mind and changing negative thoughts into positive ones can almost be impossible to do when in a sensitized and uncomfortable body. However, working on your body, releasing the tension, flushing out those stress hormones consistently is something that can be achieved with enough willpower. And willpower is exactly what you need to work on right now. Because I know that being proactive and taking that leap of faith when challenging your body, when maybe escalating the symptoms at first, can be a big step to take. But over time, you need your body to start to relax, which makes restful sleep possible. And that's where you will notice that your mind suddenly becomes capable of seeing things a lot clearer, besides having less symptoms to deal with altogether. Then, or even during that time, add the meditations, breathing techniques, positive affirmations, on all the other things that seemed impossible to do before, to really start digging yourself out of that hypersensitive and fired up state. Be patient with yourself, take notes of your anxiety recovery process, and don't give up after just a few days of not seeing any results. Full recovery is a journey that will take some time and can come with setbacks, but if you stay the course of releasing tension and losing stress, you will get there. Thanks for watching everyone, and if you're new here and want to see more anxiety related content just like this one, consider subscribing.